Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet! This is Rain Dog coming at you from the Season 2 finale of this Let's Play Minecraft Survival series! In this special episode, we are going to be having a look back at some of my favorite moments from Season 2. And let me tell you, Cyber Diggity Dogs, it is gonna be freaking sweet! Damn! I've also added a bit of a surprise at the end of this video, guys. So if you're thinking about quitting halfway through, think again. There is something really freaking sweet at the end of this finale special. So I hope you've got your tasty beverage closer at hand and a huge bowl of popcorn slash chips because, guys, this is going to be freaking epic. Let's get it on! Well, Cyberdog Season 2 has been quite the incredible journey, I must say, both in and out of the Minecraft world. In this video, we're going to be covering all of that. But right now, guys, I want to take you all the way back to the beginning of the season, where we came out of a very dark hole just behind Dogtown, which is now our secured NPC village. And boy, oh boy, did we find ourselves in a precarious situation. Well, one might call it a zombie apocalypse. Let's take a look. All right, guys, I'm going to be digging all the way up to the surface. Going to make a little stairway all the way up to the surface. And I will see you when we get to the top, guys. It's getting too freaking scary down here, man. I'll see you back in one freaking second. All right, we are back, guys. And I can hear the scuttling of a freaking spider. And let me tell you, it is freaking terrifying. Take an arrow to the face, you bastard. I mean, seriously. I mean, the, dudes, the new sounds in 1.4 are terrifying. Seriously. Um, oh my goodness. There's so much stuff trying to kill us right now, guys. Um, what the? What the freak? What the freak? Run! Oh my god. Creeper, creeper, creeper. Get to town. Get to town, people. We need to defend the town. We need to defend the town. Eat some bread. I need help. Oh my god, guys. This is crazy. This is crazy. Bang! Bang to the rescue! The sun is coming out! Please, God, kill them! Oh, my lord! Kaplooey! Oh, my goodness! The sun couldn't come out faster! Please! Please! Whew. Oh, my goodness gracious, guys. This... <laughs> the hard mode is freaking me the hell out, guys. Seriously. Um... Oh, God. Whew. Okay, everything seems... Wait! What's that? What's that sound? There's a zombie bashing on a door somewhere. Rescue! I'm here, guys. I'm here. Where? Where are you, you bastard? Leave the villagers alone. No! You're infecting the freaking villagers, you bastard. Okay, everything's still fine in there. No! No! Oh, my God. No! No! Oh my goodness, guys. The, the village has been infested. There's just a few got people left. And it's up to them to breed and to st start again, man. Oh my god, this is crazy, man. We need, to, we need to defend the village. No! No! The village has been infested, people. This is such bad news, man. This is unbelievably bad news. Look at all the broken doors everywhere. Oh, this is like a zombie apocalypse up in this business, man. We've lost all of our NPCs. Well, there's two left, and there's a there's a boy and a girl. And, you know, they can get busy getting busy. And um, they'll be able to repopulate this place. But um, things are looking grim, man. Things are looking grim, my people. Oh, my goodness. Luckily, we managed to secure that village and save the last remaining NPCs from certain zombified death. And, of course... Dogtown managed to repopulate itself and it was one of the first major projects that we actually got up to in season two where we managed to build a wall and a anti-enderman moat all the way around Dogtown and of course Dogtown is now a thriving community up in the desert but of course we needed to get our buttholes back to the molehole because we had an incredible task ahead of us guys can you remember when we first started talking about building the nether portal temple? Well, we needed to clear out a space next to the mole hole to make that nether portal temple. And the only way we were going to do that was using freaking TNT, baby. Let's take a look. 
Oh mountain, how long you have existed in the jungle, and by what chance I stumbled upon thee, I will never know. But today will be the last day of your existence, for with a flick of this lever, I am going to end you, to make room for my nether portal. Mountain, may you forever exist in the memories of Minecraftia. <laughs> oh, Mountain, we have met once before in battle and you were victorious. But this time, through the power of Creeper Poo, I am going to destroy you completely. Your time in Minecraftia has come to an end. And may you rest in pieces. <laughs> Goodbye, sweet mountain. May you have sweet dreams forever. Greetings Cyberdogs, this is Rendog coming at you from the Nether Portal Temple Foundation in this Let's Play Minecraft 1.4 Survival Series. In the previous episode we were preparing this mountainside for the construction of the Nether Portal Temple and as you can see I have cleared away all the freaking debris and damn that is a sweet ass sunrise right there man. Whew, damn that is beautiful. Um, anyway guys I have cleared out everything that you can see before you. You know guys, getting my paws on all that sweet ass TNT was one of the funnest things that I've ever actually done in Minecraft and it was actually the first time in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival series that we got to use TNT on a major scale and boy did we make good use of that TNT man. We cleared out an entire mountain face. More importantly though, it was the first time where we actually did some serious terraforming. It was the first time that we actually started to clear out huge chunks of land to make way for our epic projects. And of course, the epic project that was going to take the place of that cleared out land was the Nether Portal Temple, which is now one of our greatest and most accomplished designs in this series. But we're going to take a look a little bit later at how the Nether Portal Temple came to be. Of course, at that point in the series, we only had one thing on our freaking minds, and that was getting some freaking doggies to join us in the mole hole and to actually grow the cyber dog pack for reals in this Let's Play Minecraft series. And of course, guys, I'm talking about our awesome dogs. Let's take a quick look at how we actually ended up finding our doggy friends. If I lost the sword, I don't know what I would do. I'd be a freaking sad doggy. There's a doggy. Hello, puppy. Ow. All right, guys, let's see if we can actually tame this freaking dog. Where'd you go? There you are. Come here, doggy. I got a bone for you. Check it out, I got, I got a bone for you. One. Oh, he's mine. Oh, look at him. Isn't he cute? I name thee Fido. Come with me, Fido. We are, we are hunting creepers. Oh, and there's one. Dude, you gotta come with me, man. You gotta come with me. There we go. Alright, stay away from the water, though, my friend. Stay away from the water. Oh, man, look at this. This is so awesome. I got a freaking wolf. Attack! Oh! I'm so sorry! No, put him out! Put I'm so sorry. Fido, I'm so sorry, man. My bad. My bad, dude. My bad. Man, I feel so bad. Ow! Okay, I gotta be really careful when Fido is with us because um, I can accidentally set him on fire. And there's another one! Sweet. Oh, there's two creepers here, man. Three creepers! Man, if Fido dies, I'm gonna be a sad panda. Did he die? Was that the sound? Of that wasn't the sound of him dying, right? Oh man, this is oh, this has been so sweet. 
Oh, there's another doggy there. There's two doggies. Oh, this this is good times, guys. Fido, dude, what are you up to there, man? Wake up! Come on, come. You gotta you gotta help me get these other guys. Come on. Hello, doggy. Look what I got for you, man. I got a little bone for you. Mm -mm -mm. Welcome to the pack, my little puppy. Scratch your head. Mm. I'm gonna name you Jock, because that was the name of my first dog. So we got Jock, we got Fido, and we've got one more creeper. Sweet. Give me a poo, you bastard. <laughs> oh, nice. No, 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 no. Dude, bad move. Bad move, Jock. Yeah. Man, these dogs. These dogs are going to... These, these dogs are going to be the end of me, man. I'm telling you. All right. Let's try and get this guy out of here. Dude, what are you up to, man? Why, why have you put yourself in here? I know... Guys, get out of the water. Seriously, man. All right. Doggy! Doggy, take this boat! Take it! Sweet! Okay, come guys! Come! Come with me! No, he's gonna die! Alright, let's do... <laughs> I don't know how these dogs work, but um, we need to get them out of this, this watery area. They seem to be slightly bugged. Um, so I'm going to make like steps for them. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll be able to get up the steps. Now let's see if we can get them back to the mole hole actually. Come guys, we need to get back to the mole hole. No, don't sit. Don't sit. Follow me. Follow. Follow me. Everybody, follow me. And as you guys should all know, we would eventually get another member of the dog pack because some of our puppies got a little bit frisky and they got busy getting busy. You know what I'm saying? And of course, we welcomed a new member to the pack in the form of Pearl. Possibly the cutest of all the dogs, I would say. And of course, guys, as you should also know, we eventually tamed a cat. And, well, we had to tame a number of cats. And, uh, of course, Paloma is still with us, protecting us in the sewers of Mole City. Next up in the series, we started dabbling in a little bit of enchanting. And of course, this was the first time that we enchanted a weapon to be added to our custom cyber dog arsenal. And that was in the form of Rambo. And what a sweet ass name that was. It was a name suggested by a cyber diggity dog at the end of season one. And it has been one of our most powerful tools to date. That is for shizzle. Let's take a look at how Rambo came into being. That's right. So, man, we have tons of experience in here just waiting to be collected, um, which is sweet. But we might actually save that for once we've used all of our um, all of our stuff. So, let's do this, guys. Rambo, power three bow in the ass. Bam! That is awesome. I am so freaking happy with that, man. Um, oh, God. Now, Rambo is probably my favorite weapon only because it completely changed the way that we played Minecraft. Suddenly, exploring, going out at night, going to the nether, all of these things became so much easier with a much more powerful bow. And uh, as you guys know, we eventually got the an, an infinity enchant onto Rambo, which gave us infinite arrows. And as you guys know, we were playing season two in hard mode and uh, Rambo couldn't have come at us better time than it did that is for shizzle of course we would continue to add enchanted weapons and tools to our arsenal including the next one that we're going to have a look at and that is of course guys the one the only sweet ass freaking terror the pickaxe man and wow did terror change minecraft for us in an unbelievable way not only did uh, terror allow us to dig through cobblestone like nobody's freaking business it basically halved the time it took for us to mine things like iron coal redstone etc and uh terror being an incredibly over enchanted pickaxe has really been uh the cornerstone of season two in my opinion i, I don't think terror gets as much um, as much credit as she deserves because without Terror we would never have been able to achieve what we did in season two. Let's take a look how she came to be. I know what you're all saying, man. You've got 34 levels and you're not doing anything with them. So let's stop messing around and let's get to the wizard's tower and to the anvil. Let's repair up Fang because Fang is looking 
Man, Fang is looking really, really in pain at the moment, man. Damn, he's got less than, than half his durability going. And, uh, you know, we don't want to lose Fang. We also want to make... Uh, we also want to make our pickaxe, though. That's the thing. We want to name and make our pickaxe. We've got our Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 4 pickaxe here, which is, you know, epic. And um, I want to fix it. Um, now, if I put... Can I actually... F okay. Mm, it, it, it almost fixes it. So I think what I have to do is... Um, maybe go get some of my diamonds, and we'll mess around with you know, making the diamonds work. A lot of you guys gave me some really good hints and tips on how to use the anvil. And it's actually really important where you stick the diamonds in the anvil. So um, let's see if we can fix uh, the pickaxe just using diamonds and maybe using less resources. Um, so there's the pickaxe. Now, if I stick all the diamonds in there, um, okay, so it looks like it's going to need three diamonds to repair there. And if I put it in here, Okay, so that doesn't actually do anything for me there. Um, okay, so it's going to take three diamonds to fix the pickaxe, which I think is I think is reasonable. Um, we would have had to combine these both of these pickaxes to make a good enough pickaxe to repair the pickaxe. So I think three diamonds is good enough, and it doesn't look like I can do it the other way around. So um, I'm going to repair this pickaxe, and I'm also going to name the pickaxe now. Um, a lot of you guys gave me some really amazing suggestions for naming the pickaxe, and we're going to be naming the pickaxe um, Terra. And the reason we're going to be naming it Terra is it, it is in I'm naming the pickaxe after Terraria, in honor of Terraria, which is where I started um, my my YouTube videos. So um, this pickaxe for, will forever be known as Terra. And uh, that is in honor of Terraria. We're going we're to be using all of our freaking levels for this. But I think that's worth it. We don't actually need Fang uh, right away. Um, so we will be repairing Fang and Rambo at a later stage. But please welcome Terra to the Cyberdog family. The latest addition to um, the set of Cyberdog goodness, man. And this pickaxe is badass. Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3. This pickaxe... It, it, means freaking business people let me tell you man um well I, we could probably fix up fang um a little bit right let's see oh, but we we're gonna need the levels um but that's cool guys so oh man i'm so happy with our new pickaxe this is epic Terra, you are amazing and as you guys know we would eventually start enchanting other tools and weapons including another iron pickaxe called claw with fortune 2 which is capable of doubling up on awesome things like diamonds and emeralds. We'd also make Paw the shovel, as well as the armor of the dog and the armor of the butthole too. So uh, a lot of enchanting and a lot of anvil work going on in season two. And damn, man, it has been freaking sweet. Next up in season two, I got a little bit of inspiration from one of my favorite Minecrafters, Etho. And uh, what I wanted to do was to recreate one of his sweet ass piston doors for the Nether Portal Temple. Let's take a look at that sweet ass project. Still one of my favorite things that I've made so far. Let's take a look, guys. All right, there we go. Looking good. All right, gents and ladies, of course. Let's have a look what it looks like. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wait. Wait, there's more symmetry fail. Let's just complete this wall right here. Um, there we go, guys. Look at that, right? So that's going to be the entrance into the Nether Portal Temple. And uh, you're going to run along here on glass above lava. And you're going to hit this pressure plate. And uh, kaplam! The door's going to open. And uh, you get through just in time. And what's what the, the genius of this design, of um, Ethos's design, is that there's a hole in the middle. And this is going to be a one-way door only, right? So the only way to get back out is with a with an ender pearl, right? And you can just ender pearl your way through this hole. That is the genius of this design. Um, so one more time for the road, guys. We're going to run through the door. This is going to there's going to be another pressure plate here to open up uh, to lift up a bridge here, go over the bridge and into the Nether Portal Temple. Man, I am so happy with how that piston door turned out in the end. And you know why, Cyber Dogs? Because it looks like a freaking butthole, that's why. But damn do I love it. But guys, by this stage, the foundations of the Nether Portal Temple were starting to take shape and we had already lit one of our Nether Portals. 
and it was time to take our frightened asses into the nether. And my goodness, will I never forget my first encounter with the ghast. It was some scary ass jazz. Let's take a look, my friends. Greetings, cyber dogs. This is Rendog coming at you from inside the nether in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. And we've got a freaking... Oh my god, what is that? What is that? I haven't even started my intro yet, you bastard! Oh my god, what in the holy name was that, guys? This is Rendog coming at you from Minecraft 1.4. In this Minecraft survival series, we're in the nether and something disgusting is trying to kill us. And, um... He set our freaking portal on fire. This is not good, people. In the previous episode, we were preparing to come here, but I don't know how prepared we are. What in the name of... What is that? Oh! Ooh, I can actually hit these things. What? Oh, my... Ow! Oh. Okay, oh, wait. Hang on. Let, let's try this again. Blam! No! Blam! Um... <laughs> no! <laughs> come on! Shoot it at me! You bastard! I can't hit this thing. Ow. Wow, took it to the face. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but um, this thing is trying to kill my ass. And um, apparently, guys, thank you to everybody who gave me some freaking hints and tips in the comment section below. But apparently, cobblestone is what you use to shield yourself against whatever the hell that thing is spitting at me. Oh my god, man. I was hoping to come to the nether, do a little introduction, you know, do like a nice little, Hey guys, welcome to the nether, this is Rendog, blah blah blah, but doesn't look like that's going to be the case, man. This place is on fire! That thing makes a terrifying noise. It basically makes the noise of a baby. And uh, it is terrifying my ass. Oh my god, there's a giant lake of lava down there. Man, if this was Tekkit, I would be so happy right now, man. Holy lord. We could imagine how much energy we could get out of that freaking lake, and damn! Um, but anyway, guys, this is ridiculous, man. This thing is crazy. Um, this thing is trying to kick my freaking ass. Um, so I need to get, I need to get building ASAP. Seriously, man. Um, I'm gonna put up these cobblestone walls. Um, quiet, quiet, baby, freaky baby thing. God, that thing is freaking me out big time, man. Um, okay, well, it's it seems to have got stuck somewhere, at least. Um, there also seems to be something with a giant sword over there. I don't know what that is, but uh, we'll go exploring once I've built my freaking little cave here. Um, oh, my God. Okay. All right, guys, we can do, do our intro now. So, <laughs> greetings, CyberDogs. This is Rendog coming at you from the freaking nether in this Let's Play Minecraft 1.4 Survival series. In the previous episode, we were preparing to come to this terrifying place, and here we are, and um, we've just been waylaid by enemies. I have no idea what that thing is, but um, I'm assuming that that... Um... I'm assuming it's a ghast, a ghast, and um, it is very angry right now. Um, listen here, buddy. You gotta leave me alone right now, man. I'm trying to talk to my freaking cyber dogs, okay? Um, this is serious business right here, and uh, whoa! And you are messing around with us. So if you don't mind, take your ugly baby ass somewhere else, please. You know, to this day, I still don't understand how I survived that encounter. I take a look back at that video, I facepalm myself, and I just feel like an absolute noob. But we eventually managed to complete that cobblestone hut around the nether portal, eventually took out that ghast, and of course, guys, we would eventually do some really epic things in the nether, including making an amazing gold nugget farm. More on that a little bit later in this video, guys. But the very first thing that we started to do in the nether was explore. And of course, we were looking for nether bricks for the nether portal temple. And what we needed to do was find a nether fortress, harvest the nether fortress blocks, and get them back to the mole hole without getting our butts handed to us by a ghast slash any other deadly thing in the nether. Let's take a look at what happened when we found our very first nether fortress. What in the name of all that is holy is that? I think we found a nether fortress, people! Check it out! Oh my god. It is in the middle of a giant lake of lava. How, how in the hell am I supposed to get there? 
Can someone, can someone please explain to me how the hell I'm supposed to get there? Oh my god, we found a nether fortress, people. This is ridiculously sweet. Give me a freaking pickaxe five. Machine gun five, man. That's what that is, because look what we just found, people. A freaking nether fortress. Epic, epic times. But, um, oh god. Oh god. How are we going to get down there? That is the question. Um, oh my god, guys. This is so sweet. I've never seen a nether fortress before. Look at that. It looks so epic. It's so massive. Um, well, the only way that I can think about getting across there is building a bridge, right? But, um, hmm. How in the name of all that is holy are we going to build a bridge without dying? I mean, maybe we need to get down there and then go along the lava, right? That seems like that seems like a pretty reasonable plan. Oh Lord. Okay. Um, there is a ghast with our number. Get out of the way, butthole. Gotta take care of some business up in here. All right, guys. What we need to do is get down to the bottom. Oh God. Where are you? Oh God, I'm under siege from all angles. Ghasty, maybe he's like the defender of the freaking nether portal, uh, the nether fortress thing. Oh my god, that is so awesome. I need to get down there ASAP. I need to get down there. There he is. Let's see if we can snipe his ass. Come on, show your ugly face. Kaplam! Boom! Nailed him! <laughs> that was awesome. Gotcha, you bastard. That's what you get for messing with the dog. Man, I will never forget those first few hours in the nether. What an amazing gaming experience it was. I absolutely loved it. And what I loved even more is that I had you guys by my side every step of the way, helping me not die. And man, exploring that giant ass nether fortress was intense. And fighting those blazes, man, that was some serious business. Of course, uh, the blaze rods that we harvested from that blaze that we killed would eventually get us a brewing stand which would eventually result in the birth of Beatrice. So what an incredible journey uh, that was and what an incredible outcome eventually it would result in. You guys can call me freaking Yoda, man. And speaking of blazes, let's take a look at our very first encounter with a blaze in the nether. Oh, look, a, a cute little pit of lava. Isn't that cute? But it's wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm, it's the run of death. Run! Hey, there's a pig over here. Oh, there, there is a blaze spawner, guys. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Let me see if I can actually secure this. Will putting torches around this actually secure it? This is epic. Guys, you know what I need to do, man? I need to make a nether portal right over here. Or, or over here somewhere, right? And then go back to the, the normal world and maybe link it up with a, a railway line. Um, where is home? Home is 273 meters that way. We could make a cobblestone tunnel railway line all the way to this mob spawner over here. Look, it's a blaze spawner, people. This is so sweet. Oh, God. There's another one. There's another one over here. Secure it. Spawn. Oh, Lord. Bam. 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 Oh my goodness gracious, guys. Well, that, it, the, the torches don't seem to have stopped the spawnage. So, um, that's bad times. Next up on the agenda for Season 2 was beginning work on the Nether Portal Temple. And of course, this was going to be a giant ass temple made out of Nether Bricks in commemoration of the Nether Portal. You know, I always felt that the Nether was such an important part of Minecraft that it deserved something huge built in its honor and uh, not just having a Nether portal shoved somewhere in the molehole. So we undertook what was possibly the biggest construction project up until that point in the series. And that was, of course, to make a giant ass pyramid temple. And my freaking goodness gracious, did that thing turn out sweet. Let's take a look, my cyber diggity dogs. And I have been doing a little bit of off-camera work that I want to show you guys, man. I have installed the glass up in this business. Um, you can see I've done it using a whole bunch of dirt. Man, that took me a butt-long time. 
Um, but I have also added some freaking nether rack down on the floor of the temple. And I wanted to take a look at it from all the way up here. Um, and I actually think that that is looking pretty freaking sweet. What do you guys think, man? I'm loving the way that that ne um, nether rack looks in that space. And what I want to do, I, I don't think you can actually grow nether warts up here, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I still need to find out. And if you can, I want to plant some nether warts up in that business. Guys, in this episode, we're going to carry on working on the glass walls of the temple. And um, I just want to thank all of you for all the amazing freaking hints and tips you've been giving me in the previous episode about what to do with this um, this amazing temple that we're building. And um, I got some amazing freaking hints and tips, guys. And uh, um, thank you to everybody. Um, and I want to especially thank Neo Shade, who suggested that I make the, the door out of netherrack. And I actually think that that is a very, very sweet look. Um, and look at that, man. That just looks absolutely epic. I, I'm really... I'm really happy with that door. It's so much better than the mossy cobblestone or any other um, combination that I tried. So check it out. Bam! And then, oh man, the floor of the temple is just looking sweet. And what I want to do is line the inside of this um, pit with netherrack. And then either put... Uh, what I want to do is maybe put water in it. Um, in the previous episode, which was uh, made last year in 2012, we were working on the Nether Portal Temple, guys, and it is now 2013, January 8th, and I am back from my holiday, ready to play some freaking Minecraft with my cyber dogs. And I cannot wait to get started on everything that we need to finish off this year, man. There's the lakeside villa that we still need to work on. But guys, the Nether Portal Temple, we were working, well, I have been working my butthole off to finish this nether portal temple it is looking freaking epic man you can see that i've done quite a lot of work off camera so i want to take you guys through the changes that i've made i decided to come up on this pillar over here to get a different perspective of the temple because i haven't seen it from a sort of bird's eye view yet and as we can see guys i have finished these lava pillars and put braziers on top of them i've also put braziers on top of the uh, temple itself i think it adds a pretty sweet effect and i've added grids all the way down the oxygen entry holes of the near the portal temple that is their official name and um, I've also been working on the walls of the cathedral entrance to coming into the nether portal temple. Still got quite a lot of work to do over here. But guys, I'm going to take you downstairs to show you what I've done inside the temple. I've basically finished it off and uh, it is looking freaking sweet, man. You know, those of, those of you guys, who perhaps you are new to the series. You might not have seen the nether portal yet because um, we haven't been there in a while. And uh, let's go have a look. So this was a temple built in honor of the nether portal um i didn't basically i didn't just want to make a nether portal just somewhere smack bang in the mole hole i wanted to actually do something to to really celebrate the nether portal because of course the nether didn't exist in minecraft until um, i don't know until when but it was a long time that the, that the uh the net you know you couldn't actually get to the nether and i think the nether is such a, an amazing idea and it really added a new dimension to minecraft and um, I'm such a huge fan of, of the Nether, and and this is what we uh, was our first major project of season two, and probably our biggest project ever in this series. Um, you know, making use of a lot of different materials, making use of lava. Um, you know, trying to make this place look really awesome. You can see we've got the lava flowing underneath the glass, and just trying to keep everything looking really, really sweet. We built these epic braziers, which was a fantastic suggestion by many cyber dogs. And of course, the nether portal temple. But before we go into the nether, I wanted to quickly backtrack and show you guys this door. Um, we just ran straight through it, but I want to take you back because it was one of the first real redstone constructions that we did in season two. And these pressure plates actually open this door just like this. And, and, and this is called the nether portal butthole because <laughs> it basically looks like a butthole. And it is inspired by a design by Etho. And uh, he's an incredible Minecrafter. And I'm very, very proud of this um, construction. And, um, it, you know, it was really freaking sweet, guys. But I want to take you into the nether now to show you what we have done on the other side of this portal, which is basically hell. You know, most of the cyber dogs that I met at Comic-Con 2013 in London told me that their favorite thing in Rentopia was the Nether Portal Temple. And you know what, guys? I think I'm probably going to agree with you after watching these videos back, man. What an epic construction that was. Oh, God, it's so awesome. My face is beginning to melt just looking at it. 
And of course, now that we had easy access to the nether, we started using it for fast travel. As you guys know, one block in the nether equates to eight blocks in the overworld. And this suddenly gave us an opportunity to explore areas of the overworld that we would have otherwise not be able to get to. And my goodness gracious, did we find some epic freaking jazz on our nether portal adventures. Let's take a look, dudes. <laughs> How long did that take to break? Damn. All right. One, two. One, two. And then it's got to be another... No! No! <laughs> Wasteful. And then we got to come... Um, we got to come across like this. There we go. That, I do believe, is the design. Oh, God. Need to eat. Oh, God, guys. This is going to be so sweet. I have no idea where this is going to take us. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing where we pop up in the overworld. Hopefully, it's going to be in a really sweet biome. Hopefully, it's going to be in a mountain biome. Because we still need to find freaking emeralds, man. We haven't even seen an emerald yet in this Let's Play series. Can you believe it, man? That's just ridiculous. We're going to try to get a butt ton of emeralds once we make Mole City just beneath the mole hole because we're, we're going to be able to start trading with the villagers of Mole City and we're going to be able to increase our, um, our emerald count dramatically, um, hopefully. All right, guys, the nether portal is ready to be lit and uh, let's see what is on the other side of this bad boy kaplam. Whew. All right, guys, this is it. We're going to a new freaking overland. Let's hope for an epic adventure, guys. Give me a freaking five. Let's do this, baby. Overland, here we come. What? What the jazz? What the jazz? Oh my God, a dungeon. A dungeon, we've, we've come into a dungeon. Oh my goodness gracious, this is crazy people, our nether portal has taken us straight into the ass of a brand new dungeon, somewhere far freaking away, oh my goodness gracious, greetings cyberdogs, this is Rendog coming at you from a dungeon, somewhere in Minecraft, and it's Let's Play Minecraft 1.4 survival series, in the previous episode, we made a nether portal in the nether fortress, and it looks like the nether portal has literally spawned inside a dungeon, and it looks like there is our molehole waypoint 2,000 meters away, guys. And looking at the map, it looks like we are in the middle of the freaking ocean somewhere. Deep underground in the middle of a zombie spawner dungeon. Oh my goodness, people. This is so freaking epic. Oh my... This... I... Oh man, I, after reading some of the comments in the previous video, I thought I was going to probably spawn in the air or uh, in the ocean itself. But this is absolutely insane. What... What? This is epic, man. It's almost like fate sent us, sent us here to get some gold for Granny Dog's monument, man. Seriously. Um, man, a lot of you guys have been asking about Granny Dog's monument and when it's going to be built. And I think it's probably going to get built really soon. My plan was to make Granny Dog... Granny Dog's monument in the middle of Mole City. And Mole City is basically going to be a city just in front of the mole hole that I'm going to populate by curing... Um, infected villages that we get from our mob, mob spawner so that is the plan and uh, that is still the plan and I want granny mo granny dog's monument to sit in the very middle of mole city kind of like uh, the center square you know like if you're in London like Traf Trafalgar Square right instead but instead of uh, all that dude standing on top of the statue in Trafalgar Square it's gonna be a granny dog monument and um, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about um, my grand passed away last year and I plan to build an epic Minecraft monument out of all the gold that I find in Minecraft in dedication of her memory. So that is going to be sweet and I think we're probably going to do that as our next major project um, because it's been a, you know, it's been a long time now that I've been thinking about making the monument and we just haven't got quite got around to doing it yet. So I definitely want to get, get that done. 
The only thing that makes me sad watching those videos again, guys, is that I don't think I will ever be able to nether portal straight into a dungeon ever again. That was some of the freaking sweetest ass luck that I have ever gotten in any game. And my goodness, was it sweet! Of course, it was during this very first nether portal adventure, guys, that we started talking seriously about Granny Dog's monument. And those of you guys who are perhaps joining us late and haven't watched this season yet, well, firstly, I'm freaking angry with your ass! And I'm going to be shoving all types of unmentionable things up your buttholes if you don't go back and watch the whole freaking season! Oh, God, you make me so angry. But guys, anyway, this was the first time we started talking about Granny Dog's monuments. And as you guys know, my grand passed away uh, last year. And the, the idea that I had at this stage hadn't really come to fruition yet. But what I wanted to do was to create a monument in honor of my grand. And that is obviously uh, something that we would eventually get to in this season and something that we'll be looking at a little bit later on in this video. But guys, at the end of this Nether Portal adventure, we started to head back home. And lo and behold, on the way back to the mole hole, we found our very first freaking desert temple. And man, it was so sweet. Looks like. And the last time we were in a desert biome, we actually found an NPC village, if you guys remember um, correctly. And that was freaking sweet, man. Um, so let's see if we can actually find something in this desert biome. There, there's got to be something. The sun is up. Um, which means we have a butt ton of time to explore this desert and when the sun goes down um, the desert is not a place that you want to be um, it seems to have a much higher spawn rate than any of the other biomes i think that's actually a fact uh, what what the hell is that what in the hell is that oh my goodness people i think we may have just stumbled across a desert freaking temple baby oh my this is our first freaking temple in the whole series in 132 episodes this is our first temple series and man i just want to thank all of you guys who gave me such incredible advice advice in the comment section of the previous video thank you so much guys here is a high five for your asses man i know exactly how to tackle this freaking temple now guys there is a pressure plate in this temple that is connected to nine bits of TNT and if anything including water um, items any kind of stuff touches that um, pressure plate this whole temple is going up in freaking smoke people so what I want to do and guys I've just fixed up the mini hole mole hole a bit also the OCD was kicking in man I had to get that sorted and I, I switched the door around also as some of you guys mentioned that the door was the, the wrong way around so thanks for that guys <laughs> man you guys have as much OCD as I do but guys I have decided that I am going to attack this temple from a completely different angle I'm gonna come in from the side and uh, man, Terra is just ripping this stuff up. Check how awesome Terra is, man. Damn, Terra is just tearing through this business. But I, I am going to attack this temple from the side rather than going down from the top. Now, what you guys have told me is that if you go from the top, there is a piece of blue wool and directly below that blue wool is a pressure plate. And if you break the blue wool, the, the, the blue wool item actually hits the pressure plate. And you know what happens after that, man. Kaplam is what happens. And um, a lot of you guys have spoken about going, uh, digging sort of around the pressure, the, uh, the, the, the pressure plate. Okay, I think we've hit the temple, guys. Um, and some of you have spoken about building um, a gravelator down into the into the temple itself and i thought that all of those were sweet ideas but i think that they are pretty risky and i wanted to attack this freaking temple from another angle holy goodness check what's going on up in here man Ooh, hello so there is the plate the, the pressure plate there is the blue wool that you guys are talking about oh my goodness that was actually quite close um <laughs> those freaking stone blocks almost landed on that pressure plate it's still pretty unbelievable to me that I did not drop that block on that pressure plate, man. Damn! And of course, we went back to the mole hole with a butt tonnage of gold from looting that desert temple. And uh, that, was a, that was a good time, man. I really, really enjoyed looting that temple. But that was one of our longer adventures. And man, I was so happy to get back to the mole hole. And the first thing we started to work on when we got back was 
improving the farmlands and what we wanted to do was move the animals from the original animal pens which were right in front of the mole hole if you guys can remember that from season one and we were going to move them down to the farmlands and let's just say that the great animal migration of season two did not go that well let's take a look guys and i have no idea if this is going to work um but we're going to give it a go i think wheat is for for cows right it looks like it. <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy. They're going absolutely crazy, man. They, they want this wheat so bad. All right, cows. Come. All of you. All of you. All of you this way. Follow. Follow me. Come. Come get your wheat, you bastards. You dumbass bastards. Come on. Come on. <laughs> come on, guys. Come with me. Um, maybe they're getting trapped here. Let's open up a bit. Um, no, no. Guys, don't make me turn you into steaks. Do not make me turn you into steaks. Dude, don't wonder. Come this way. Oh, God. I just used up all of my... Oh, God. I just right-clicked all... Guys, this is... Oh, this isn't going well. Um, here, 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 here. Wheat. Wheat. Guys, no. Don't go wandering around. No. Here, here we go. Now we're talking. Okay, here we go. The great migration is beginning. Come on, everybody. This way. Follow me. Follow me, you hungry bastards. There we go. Come up the stairs. Up the stairs. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Follow me. Follow me over the bridge. All right. Well, we got... <laughs> this is ridiculous. Come on, cows. This way. This way. Down the stairs. Come on. <laughs> Check at them. This is, this is absurd. Oh, my God. They're going to take full damage. Come on, noobs. Come on, Stan, noobs. Check out those two up there. They're like, hell no. We know exactly what you're planning for us, man. You're going to turn us into steaks. Now's the... Now's the <laughs> make the break for it. Make the break for it. Check them. They're running, man. They know, man. This is their, their only opportunity to get out of here. Looks like we've lost the majority of our freaking cows. God damn it. Um, come this way, guys. This way. Into your new homes. Come, come on. Come on, Daisy. Times 20. Yes. Yes. Come. Come. Come, cows. Come, you bastards. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Inside. Inside. No. Inside. Inside. C cow. Cow. This way. All right. Oh, God. This one is pissing me off. Come on. Come on, cow. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Okay. All right. Everybody in. Everybody in. Come on. Everybody in. You. And you. Come on, you bastards. Come on. Come on! Ah, oh, you freaking buttholes. Come on, come on. Dude, don't just look at me. Oh. You know what time it is, guys. It's freaking steakification time, man. You freaking buttholes, you don't want to listen to me. Now you're going to turn into steaks. Definitely one of the most face palm filled episodes. <laughs> of season two but we eventually got those little bastards into their pens and we stakeified the rest so you know what <laughs> all in all i'm very happy with how the animal farms turned out next up in the series we started to focus our attention on getting the granny dog monument up and built and to do that we needed to generate a butt tonnage of gold and of course uh, through many hints and tips and great discussions by the cyber dogs both on YouTube and on dogcraft.net we went to the nether and built a giant ass gold nugget farm let's have a look how that turned out greetings cyber dogs this is Ren Dog coming at you from the newly gas proofed entrance to the gold nugget farm in this let's play minecraft survival series in the previous episode i was busy building the anti-gas cobblestone walls of the pigman spawner and i've now you can see i have completed that task and i've slabified all the light slits throughout the entire mob spawner and as you can see guys it is looking freaking sweet the reason that i've slabified fight it of course is because this mob spawner gets super stinky man seriously damn it is full of dead pig giblets all over the show and damn it is stinky up in here man we needed some ventilation i mean the nether doesn't smell too good itself but i mean the smell of the nether is way better than the smell of dead pigmen man let me tell you guys um, but as you can see guys this pigman pigman spawner is working beautifully we got pigmen falling from the sky it's raining pigs hallelujah it's raining pigs yeah baby 
<laughs> I remember there was a CyberDog in the comment section of that video who worked out that we needed to gather something like 192,000 gold nuggets to complete the Granny Dog Monument using the gold nugget farm only. And of course, that is probably unviable and probably impossible to achieve. But the gold nugget farm is a good supplement of gold for us and it has given us quite a few gold blocks. Of course, the Granny Dog Monument is not finished yet. It is going to be the number one priority of season number three. But damn, did we spend a lot of time building that freaking farm, man. I spent hours upon hours upon hours in the nether. In fact, I spent so much time in the nether staring at all of that red jazz that my eyes started going squiffy, man. It was crazy. I felt, I, I started getting motion sickness. It's just, man, the nether is a place that makes you physically ill in real life as well as in Minecraft, man. It is a crazy ass place. But the gold nugget farm is there. It's now automated, of course. We upgraded it slightly uh, nearer the end of season two where we added um, uh, mine carts with hoppers on them that automatically pick up the gold nuggets. So it is doing its business up in the nether. But after all of that crafting, we needed to go on an adventure. And I gotta say that this was probably the greatest discovery in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series to date. Absolutely incredible luck that we stumbled across a double dungeon. Lava is blocking off something. Is that a chest? Is that a chest? It is a chest and it is a dungeon. It is a chest and a dungeon in one, man. That is epic. And it is just a spider spawner. So that is, that is sweet. Oh, God. Let's contain this lava. We have a lava spill. And we get more mossy cobblestone. Sweet. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Dude, 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 dude. Stop. Stop your, stop your jazz. And we get a whole bunch more balls, too, which is sweet. So, yeah, man, first time I went to you. Oh, what the hell? There's two on top of each other here, guys. Do you see this? This is double spawner action. Oh, God. The last time we did this, a creeper blew us up. This is epic. Oh my... No, 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 no. I actually don't have a lot of life. Die, bastards! Well, I have to say, this is a first, man. I have never seen two spawners on top of each other, and now I feel like a butthole... Oh, wait, I'm killing them with a bow. Now I feel like a butthole for breaking the spawner, because we could have made a pretty sweet, um... multi-spawner facility over here, man. We could have made an... Oh! I am such an idiot! Why did I break the spawner? Oh, God. I are idiot. I are idiot. My bad. My bad. This is pretty sweet, though, right? Double spawner action. We could have got zombies and spiders. So we could have got spider eyes and zombie flesh all day long. Um, instead, I completely messed it up. Man, I'm, I'm an idiot. I feel so dumb now. Bread! Dude, where are you spawning from? Oh, this spawner is still making you spawn, is it? Blam! Oh man, that I feel so dumb, man. We could have made such an epic spawning um, thing here, but hopefully we can find something like that um, closer to home. Because this is pretty far away from... Oh, an enchanted book! Fire protection four! Oh my god. That is so epic. Dude, can you not see I am busy freaking out? Leave me alone! Fire protection for people and a music disc. What? This is the most epic loot. This is the most epic loot I've ever got from any chest. A music disc and an enchanted book from a chest. And another <laughs> another enchanted book. Respiration 2. I don't, I don't even know what that does, but it sounds freaking sweet. Man, I will never forget that adventure, spotting that double dungeon, getting all of those sweet-ass books. Man, that was some seriously epic jazz. Um, the return journey back to the molehole was also epic. If you guys remember, we had to dig up into the ocean and take a boat and try and get all the way back to the molehole. We were something like 4,000 blocks away or something ridiculous, man. But man, that was an absolutely epic adventure. But you know, guys, when we got back to the mole hole, it was time for burnification. Trogdor was circling the mole hole, and it was time. 
to clear the land for the uh, uh, the eventual arrival of our biggest and most ambitious project in this series now and probably for a very long time mole city and of course we were going to be building mole city in front of the mole hole and we needed to clear out a giant ass area of land covered in trees and foliage and all other types of jazz that we had to get rid of of course the best way to get rid of jazz is with fire let's watch this should be a relatively good controlled burn and i think that we should quite successfully be able to burn down all of the freaking foliage up in here guys i've got my fireman's gear on and i am ready to set this place on fire sit back guys relax because this is going to be a hot episode man god dang it is going to be sweet so guys i hope this doesn't go horribly wrong and we end up burning down the mole hole but um hopefully that won't happen i've got buckets of water at the ready just in case things get out of hand but guys let us get freaking burninating up in here man freaking burninating the peasants all right <laughs> why don't we start right here with these trees in the back here guys um let's try and do this quite systematically you know what i'm saying so let's work our way um up the the actual foundation or the or the surrounding boundaries of mole city man let's work our way up here this one is a bit precarious because it's very close to the railway lines i think i don't think i want to set that one on fire oh my god guys look at this this is absolutely crazy man oh oh my goodness this is spreading really quickly um i really do hope that this uh, wasn't a bad idea <laughs> um I, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to go cray cray up in here, man. I'm just going to set everything on fire and see what happens. Um, you know, if we see, oh, oh my lord. If we see that the fire is getting a little bit too close to comfort to the mole hole, we're going to have to do something about that. Um, of course, the advantage of doing this at night is that any mobs that try to try to attack us are going to get their asses burninated. And uh, it is going to be freaking sweet. <laughs> but check it out, man. Oh my goodness, look at that. This place is burning down like nobody's business. This was a very good suggestion, man. I have a feeling that you guys who suggested this have done some burninating yourselves. Am I right or am I right? Gonna have to say, Cyberdogs, that was one of my favorite episodes in this entire season. There was always this overarching fear that I was gonna set the mole hole on fire and man, I, <laughs> it, was, it was so much fun actually. Um, just as much fun as using TNT really. Um, but yeah guys, by that stage we were pretty far into season 2, our focus was on making Mole City. Uh, we would, you know, start start working on the sewers and, and getting all the stuff ready for Mole City. But at that time, um, in my personal life, things started to take a bit of a bad turn, as a lot of you guys will know. Um, I don't want to go into the details, but you know, things weren't going too well for me at home and the death of my grandmother was still looming over me quite badly. And, uh, you know, I really needed to use this series, to use the Cyberdog community and to use, you know, this, what we are doing in Minecraft to get my mind off all of that stuff. And we started working on the Granny Dog Monument. And I told you guys a story that my grandmother told me about staircases. And it is a story that has helped me through uh, the last six months of my life, which some of you guys will know have been pretty damn intense, man. But I want to relive that uh, episode with you guys and let's let's listen again to the story that that granny dog told me many many years ago um and what has really helped me get through all of this stuff this year but while i'm building it guys i want to sort of tell you the story about how i came to this design in my mind and uh, and obviously this design is inspired by my gran now my gran passed away last year and um, i'm doing this monument in memory of her so this is kind of like you know the start of of my sort of um ode to my grand really in this minecraft series and i mean let, where to start well let, i mean let's let's go over a bit of the uh, a bit of the history that i have with my grand right so when i was about eight years old i moved to a different city with my mum and my brother and uh, we moved to the city to live with my grand and my grandpa now the reason we did that was because my father passed away when we were a bit, uh, a bit younger so two years before we moved my father passed away and my mum thought that it would be a good idea um, for us to go and live with his parents and of course that was my granny and my my granddad um, so this is the start of the design guys as you can see we've got the sort of steps going up in this direction and I'm going to be building the steps going uh, building another flight of steps going in the sort of opposite direction um, if you guys know what I'm saying but so we moved to the city and we actually lived with our grandparents for quite a while 
for um, I think it was probably two years or so um, until we until we moved into our own house in this in, in the new city. But um, I remember one day I had a really bad day at school, and uh, I, I was at cricket practice. And I was actually really late for cricket practice. Um, and the reason that I was late for cricket practice was because um, I think I was messing around with my friends, either at one of the gang um, hideaways. I don't know if, if the Silkworm gang had started yet, but we were certainly messing around somewhere um, in the school when we should have been at cricket practice. So I was really late for cricket practice and my cricket coach was angry with my ass, man. Damn, he was raging. Um, so as you can see, guys, we've got sort of two sets of stairs now going up next to each other. I do like this. Um, I like where this is going. And um, anyway, we got to cricket practice and and my cricket coach was really upset with me. So what I want to do now is sort of try and build a, a structure that goes straight up the monument. It's kind of be like the walls of the beacon, if you will. And anyway, my coach decided to punish my ass. Well, I guess as any cricket coach would, you know, I was, I was probably being really naughty somewhere in the school when I should have been at cricket. And uh, he made me run up and down this flight of stairs that, that took you up to the library of the school. And um, man, it was probably like two stories high, or it might have just been <laughs> one flight of stairs, but because I was a kid, it seemed really, really high, you know? Um, so now we've sort of got the the peak of the of the monument, going up the middle of the monument here. Let's go have a look like uh, what that looks like. Um, so anyway, he punished me like this, and you know, I was really angry, and I was really embarrassed, I guess. Oh man, that is looking awesome! Um, and I went back home, which was back to my, my granny's house, and she had a piano room in her house and uh, when I was really down or really angry I used to go and, and play in the piano room and I, and I didn't really know how to play piano um, but you know I, I, I was just I was angry man I just wanted to, to, to make some noise and I think I was probably bashing the piano um, I remember sort of just you know making a whole bunch of noise on the piano I was probably trying to get attention you know I was probably trying to get someone's attention um, and <laughs> I certainly did get someone's attention and that was the attention of my gran and uh, she came into into the the piano room and she was you know she said why are you why are you bashing on my on my piano like that that's a really old piano all the way from Europe you shouldn't be bashing on it and um, I felt really bad and I apologized and I told her the story of uh, you know what my coach had done to me and uh, you know she listened intently and um, you know, she didn't interrupt me while I was talking and she gave, she was sort of stroking me and, and, and hugging me and telling me, you know, don't worry, everything will be okay. And, um, you know, after I finished telling her the story, she told me something that, that I always remembered that, and that I always took with me. And I'm, I'm just thinking about whether to raise this these stairs one level. Um, I think I'm going to do that. But anyway, you know, she, she told me something that I always remember. She told me that... That she, you know, she said to me, in life, sometimes you will find that um, it feels like you're going up a, a never-ending flight of steps. All you do, all you're doing, is climbing up those steps. But when you get to the top, you will be the happiest boy you will, you can ever be. Just think about the feeling that you felt when you got to the top of those steps and you and you um, you completed your your coach's task. Um, what did you feel? And I said, I felt so, so happy. And she said, that's exactly what life is like. When you get to the top of the steps, you are just absolutely happy um, and content. And, you know, I always, at the time, I didn't know what she was talking about, uh, talking about. And I was like, Granny, what the hell are you talking about? But, you know, now that I'm older, I'm able to to really think about those words. And I, and I do agree 100% um, with my gran, you know, that life is like climbing a giant set of stairs man it's freaking hard most of the time you know you get tired or I mean most of the time we're tired most of the time we're working our asses off man this life is not easy and um, you know the, the the goal is to get to the top of those steps man the goal is to freaking do what that coach is telling you to do um, and to get to the top but you know what there is a top of those steps man and when you get there it is the best freaking feeling in the freaking whole world um, and you can breathe again you know you can you can put your, you can raise your hands to the sky and scream, I did it, you bastard, I'm at the top of these freaking steps. And, um, <laughs> and I guess that's what it inspired this design. Um, the, you know, I wanted, look, this is actually looking really, really awesome, except this, the, the, it's now raining, but um, <laughs> I really like the way that this design has actually um, turned out. Look at this, guys, this is looking really awesome. And, and these steps are the sort of, the representation, I guess, of, of my journey 
in life and, and especially my grand's journey. You know, she had a, a really hard, hard time um, in, her, in her younger years. She, she was a survivor of World War II, her and my grandfather, and uh, they left Europe to go to South Africa after the war. And, you know, they came to South Africa with very little and um, they managed to, you know, to make a, a, an entire family from nothing, um, essentially. They, you know, were able to make, really do something with their lives after the war where many, many people had just given up. Um, my, my gran and, and grandma were determined to start a family and to make sure that, you know, um, they could start again and be happy out of Europe. And that's exactly what they did, man. And, and this monument is, is, a, is a tribute to them and their, their journey up, the, up their staircase of life. And, um, and, and that is basically where I got the design from. <laughs> Um, and man, I can't believe we finished it. It's, I think it's actually looking pretty sweet. Um, it looks really awesome from this angle over here. Look at that. That is looking really awesome. I mean, I think what we need to do is sort of try and uh, give it a... And that's it, guys. You know, you, you got to climb those stairs, man. You got to get to the top because at the top is a huge stack of freaking diamonds. <laughs> and that is my current goal in my personal life as well as my current goal in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival series. And you know, after I finished the, uh, the uh, initial foundations of the Granny Dog Monument, I was pumped, man. I was in such a Minecraft mood and I decided that I wanted to start working on something that was going to be logistically quite difficult. And what we did was we headed to the underworld of Mole City to start working on the sewers. And I wanted to get those sewers looking as awesome as possible and as realistic as possible. At that stage on the YouTube channel, we had just finished a, just finished a Dishonored series too. So I was inspired to make some dark and dingy sewerage pipes. And that's exactly what we did, guys. And we had a lot of fun with TNT. So let's take our asses back to those kaplooies, kaplams, and kaplows. Okay, let's do this, guys. Flint and steel. Kaplam! Bam! <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so that is actually chaining perfectly three blocks apart. And um, this, oh man, this is going to make our lives so much easier. Um, it kind of makes it a mess, but we'll clean it up, you know. And, and uh, after that, it'll, you know, it'll work. It's going to, I mean, look how many blocks this got rid of that we're not going to have to waste terror on, for example. Okay, so let's do this again, right? So, one, two, three, TNT. One, two, three, TNT. And rinse and repeat. Three, TNT. One, two, three, TNT. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a huge ass explosion, man. <laughs> this is going to be so awesome. All right, there we go. All right, we are ready to set this... <laughs> this puppy ablaze, man. I hope Paloma hasn't moved closer because uh, things are about to get crazy up in here. All right, guys, let's do this. Three, two, one. Kablam! Bam! 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 <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was absolutely epic. Oh my goodness, that was insane! Absolutely perfect, that was so sweet. Check Paloma's just like, dude, that was really dangerous. Where was the health and safety inspector for that one? <laughs> but that is absolutely perfect, look at that guys. Oh man, that is, that is what I would call a win. Um, all we gotta do now is clean this up and then we can actually um, complete the tunnel of this artery. Of course, um, we'll need to do the same for the arteries that run this direction, but um, I don't think we're going to have enough TNT to actually do that. Um, we might have to go on a bit of a, a creeper grinding mission. But check it, this guys, this is oh, this is so awesome, man. This is exactly what it must feel like if you work in construction and you get to blow stuff up, man. It must just be such a satisfying feeling, like after you've blown everything up. You know, it's daytime now, right? So obviously, it's going to be a little bit brighter than usual. But actually, if you go in here, it does start to feel quite creepy. And look, at it's even spawning freaking skeletons and zombies in the dark areas. Um, you know, I had a long think about this and I thought to myself, you know what? Actually, it might be quite cool if... Um, look at this. Look how creepy this is, man. This is awesome. The only problem now is working down here uh, might spawn creepers. And we don't want a creeper to spawn straight behind us. 
but um, if we just take a one last look at what it's going to look like in here, Paloma's like, don't go down there, dude. It is freaking dangerous. I hear you, kitty. But check it out. That actually looks amazing. This actually looks... Oh, I just love the light, the light coming out of the block of uh, Redstone Torch. I just think it's so awesome. Look, it adds like a small glow onto the, the cobblestone, and I think that is great. With the sewers done, Mole City Foundation looking good, and everything going so well in the series, we suddenly had a, a group Cyberdog epiphany. And we all suddenly realized that, Rendog, you haven't finished the freaking Lakeside Villa Harbor. <laughs> so next up in the season two, we headed over to the Lakeside Villa to do some work on the, the Lakeside Villa station, which is now situated beneath the Lakeside Villa and also um, functions as a dock to the second continent. And uh, man, I have to say it turned out pretty freaking sweet. Let's go have a look, guys. Yeah, man, I'm feeling that. That is looking pretty damn sweet. And for health and safety reasons, we need to um, fence off this area over here. You know, we don't want ki any kids falling down there and uh, basically tumbling over, rolling into the lake and being eaten by um, the really dangerous lakeside villa sea carp that are living in there. We've got carp living in here. We've got bass living in the sewage runoff, man. Seriously, dangerous times. <laughs> um, okay, so this is looking pretty good for a temporary station. I'm pretty happy with this, I think. I actually did a whole bunch of off-camera work on the Lakeside Villa Harbour, guys, that you guys never met, uh, got to see. And let me tell you, it was some frustrating ass jazz. I was being harassed by creepers and zombies and skeletons like nobody's freaking business, man. It took me forever to finish that harbour. Uh, but I, I obviously only showed you guys the good stuff. And of course, Paloma was with us at all times, and she really helped to keep those freaking nasty green ass bastards away. <laughs> but I'm really happy that the Lakeside Harbour is now done and we still need to uh, just do a little bit more work there but it is at a place where I am incredibly incredibly happy with it but guys by this stage in the season we were turning our attention on that epic project known as Mole City we were starting to work on the roads we were starting to work on flattening it out a little bit we were starting to work on exactly how the districts were going to turn out in Mole City and Damn! Uh, it suddenly dawned on me how massive and daunting this task was going to be. It was always my intention to finish Mole City, uh, or at least a big portion of it, in Season 2. But, you know, we soon, I think, collectively started to realize that that was going to be an impossible task, and a task that's going to have to go over into Season 3, and probably over into Season 4, man, because, damn, it is a ton of work. But one of the, my favorite contraptions was actually um, came about in the construction of Mole City and I absolutely love the Mole City street lamps that we designed and that are now functioning so beautifully in uh, on the streets of Mole City and of course these are street lamps redstone street lamps that turn on automatically when the sun goes down let's go have a look at how we made those sweet ass puppies and what we should be seeing at any moment now is that sticky piston retracting, thus pulling up our redstone block into the array of uh, redstone lamps and turning this bad boy on. So here we go, guys. The night is approaching. Um, we can see the sky getting darker. The stars are arriving. And retract, you bastard. Come on. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Oh, that is just awesome. Okay, so that worked. That actually worked perfectly. Look at that, man. That is beautiful. And guys, I would really love to get your um, opinions on the, the new street lamp design. I'm really keen to see if you guys like it. I really like the new street lamp design. I think it's perfect and I'm really happy with it. And um, the moment is coming soon, guys. This is like, this is like New Year's, man. It's like 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh God, one, one. Happy New Year! Woo! Happy New Year, everybody! <laughs> oh man, that was so awesome. Did you guys see that, man? The, the, the city lit up. 
um, all the street lamps came on and of course when we're gonna have mini street lamps over here in the districts those are gonna light up too and the whole city is just gonna look like it's coming alive at night and that is gonna be oh my god that is that was actually an amazing moment for me man I'm so happy with this you know this is one of the more complicated builds that I've done using um, you know the, the 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 daylight sensor and everything and, and obviously it's not that complicated but I'm, I'm really proud of how it's turned out I gotta say Definitely one of my favorite moments in this entire Let's Play Minecraft series when those street lamps went on in that video when the Sun went down my heart just started racing with happiness man I was so happy that we had managed to use just these weird ass blocks in this game called Minecraft to make what is going to look like a city look like it's coming to life and you know, sometimes I lie in my bed and I imagine Mole City being completed and entirely populated with NPCs walking around the, 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 the roads, going in and out of each other's houses and those street lamps coming on at night. And I can just imagine the city alive and bustling and just going absolutely crazy, guys. And it is going to be so freaking epic when it is done. I cannot wait uh, to go on that journey to completing Mole City and to bring you guys along with me, man. Damn! But, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time working on Mole City, working on the foundations, on the roads and on the street lamps. And, you know, the end of the, um, well, the end of the season was approaching and I suddenly realized that, you know what, guys, we need to, uh, to cure an infected villager because that was one of our major goals in season two was to get a butler into the mole hole, our very first NPC to come and join me in the mole hole of Rentopia. And uh, of course, there were many suggestions from you guys. Some of you guys said, why don't you cart in some NPCs from Dogtown? And uh, there was some other suggestions about how to get NPCs to uh, the mole hole. But you know, we settled on trying to cure an infected villager and isolating an infected villager in the butthole to do so. And uh, that was our major goal. But of course, before we could even cure an infected villager, we needed to make them a house. And that, of course, is when we started working on the Butler's Quarters, one of my favorite buildings in Rentopia, I have to say. And it's probably be because it's, it, it, it is a, a building that has the most detail, I think, out of any building that I've made so far in Minecraft. I put a lot of thought into the design of the building. I love all the lines. I absolutely love the oriental style roof. I love the inside and everything about the butler's quarters I absolutely love. So why don't we go back and have a look at the butler's quarters coming to life. It seems that my computer has been off for so long the CPU's got all dusty and stuff man. There's been some crazy glitching going on but I just restarted and everything seems to be doing just fine now. We can actually get on with this episode with no more interruptions. Well what are we actually doing in this episode today guys? Well we have got a butt ton to get through starting with working um, further on the butler's house. I want to try finish off the walls today and maybe try do some interior design work. We also have to name our new doggy and I've chosen a name for our new dog so we're going to be doing that. We also have to um, make a new spade because what I realized is that we do not have a spade in our arsenal of doggy goodness and we need to get our butts up to the the wizard's tower enchant a new diamond spade and name it uh, something on in the forge room and lastly but not leastly guys of course we got to get some of you guys onto the freaking dogolith and we're going to be getting you guys into the doggo log today so guys we actually don't have any more time for dilly dallying so let's get right to it man let's have a look at the adjustments that i've made to the butler's house since we were last together um a lot of you guys suggested swapping out these pillars over here for fences to try and make it less heavy and i think that's a really good suggestion i really like how the entrance hall is looking now i've also cleared out this area over here here. Today we're going to be making a little farm area and a, and a little well for our butler uh, right here so he can his wife can come out of the house to get some water and get some wheat and get bacon. Um, inside the house itself I've made a couple of adjustments to the windows up there I've also added a second story over here because I realized that if this butler's gonna have some kids man he's gonna need some more space so we're gonna need to find a way to get up there to the top maybe get a bed or two up there and as you can see it's kind of like a really sweet little loft um, I've also changed basically a, quite a lot of how the house looks if you guys remember from the previous video there was a beam of wood that was running across the top of these uh, support pillars and uh, it just was getting way too woody for my liking and you know when things get woody man 
Uh, I don't even want to talk about when things get woody, but it's not pretty. All right, cyber diggity dogs, we are back. And as you can see, I have found a very sweet ass painting configuration for the butler's house. What I've gone with over here, right? Th these are the colors of mole of the mole hole. Um, and what I've, got, I've gone with is the blue and white banners over here flanking this crazy ass painting over here and then above their bed are these brown banners so what i'm going to say is that these brown banners are in fact the butler and the butler's wife's family's colors so um you know they're they're an ancient family they've been they've been butlers for for generations man and these are their colors and these are the colors of rendog and of uh, the mole hole um the 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 kingdom of rentopia is blue and white so this is a representation of the butler working for us but as well as respecting his ancient roots over here in his uh, brown flags over here above his bed so i think that guys is looking absolutely freaking sweet man um really really love these paintings i've been doing this for about 20 minutes though um it's kind of annoying it's it's uh, <laughs> it takes a long time to actually find something that you like um you see like that is pretty sweet so we'll leave that there and um man that is looking sweet i am so happy with this absolutely epic and uh man the butler better be freaking grateful for this sweet ass house that i have made him because damn i would very much like to move in here and uh, you know if the butler does anything wrong he's going to get his ass fired and you uh, and myself and the cyber dogs are going to be moving into this freaking sweet ass house and then my cyber diggity dogs it was time for the cherry on the freaking top baby it was time to cure that infected villager and to get the butler in his rightful place in his quarters and man, that was one of my favorite episodes too. Absolutely loved uh, the whole process of isolating that infected villager, using the brewing stand that we created from the blaze rod that we got in the nether fortress to cure an infected villager who would affectionately later be known as Beatrice, my unofficial lady of leisure <laughs> in this Let's Play Minecraft series. Let's take a look at how Beatrice came to exist in the world of Rentopia. Um, let's just kill off a couple. Oh, wait, there, there's one guy there. Look, he's got his, no, no, no. Ooh, damn, look, that is an infected villager right there. He's got like, um, like a, a, a cloth on his head. I'm pretty sure that that is an infected villager because all the other, other um, zombies don't look like that. Guys, we have this, we have our infected villager right there. Okay. All right, guys, this is our this is our chance. This is our chance to isolate him. So let's kill all the mobs around the infected villager. Please do not move into the into my arrow infected villager. Please spider get out of my freaking life, man. You are messing with my jazz. Take it to the spider ass. OK, there's our infected villager. OK, our plan is working, guys. Right. Let's drop him down into the curing pit. Let's hope that he survived. Let's get down there. Let's see if he's actually survived that fall. I can't believe it, guys. We, we actually have an infected villager. We've managed to isolate an infected villager. All we need now is a golden apple to cure this infected villager. And that means we're going to be able to, to give birth to the mayor. Oh, my goodness. This is awesome. Okay, let's, go, let's have a look in the curing pit. Um, he's in there. He has survived the fall. All right. Now, listen here, buddy. You need to stay in here for a while. I need to go to the nether to go get some nuggets. You are, you can't go anywhere. Just chill in there with your string. I know, I, I mean, you know, make some, some patterns with that string. I'm sure your mama taught you how to make patterns with string. So get busy doing that, man. I will be back really soon. I mean, and your house is waiting for you. Look at it, man. It is waiting. The fireplace is lit. There's food in the cupboards. Um, oh, man, you are... Oops, I just trampled some of your crops. My bad. Um, but we will be back, infected villager. Please, please do not despawn. From what I can tell, we need to throw this potion at him. And, um, you know, that is... It, it, we, with all this water about, you know, the, the water might stop the, the effect of the weakness potion. Who actually knows what could happen when I throw this weak, weakness potion? I think I'm also going to turn my particles up to full um, so that we can see when he becomes uh, infected with the weakness potion. We can see all the little bits floating above him or around him or whatever um, to show that he is being cured or, or, or not. So let's get rid of the water source in here. Uh, looks like there's one more somewhere over here. Uh, there it is. Okay, so he is down there. Let's just add this. Okay, he actually can't get up here anyway, so that is fine. Um, all right, so there he is down there. Now, let, let's see if this actually works. Okay, guys, this is the this is it. We are going to be making the butler. Hold your thumbs. Let's hope this freaking works. Let's throw this freaking weakness potion at him um, and hope that it hits him. Bam! 
Right, I, I have got weakness on me. Does he have weakness on him? It looks like it. Okay, let's feed him a golden apple. Right click. Right click. Oh God. Well, that sound certainly signals to me that he is being cured or she. He's got some weird red stuff coming out of him now. Um, oh, he's like, help, I'm suffering, I'm dying. The zombie inside me is trying to break out of my brain. Come on, baby, turn into a villager. Come on, you know you want to do it. Come on, butler, come to us. Man, this is like a birth, man. This is like being in the hospital, the delivery room. You're almost there. Push, push, one more push, one more push. Come on, you can do it. I can see the head. I can see the head. <laughs> All right, well, I guess... I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this this puppy into fast forward mode and uh, we'll just stare at this guy for a few minutes in fast forward mode and on the other side of this kaplam, hopefully he's gonna transform into uh, a cured NPC. Kaplam! Hello! Hello! Hello, madam! Hello, madam uh, Beatrice! Welcome to the mole hole! You... Oh, I am so happy to be employing you. Your, your resume is wonderful. You have served some great lords and ladies in your time, and uh, we are... The Cyberdog Nation is very happy to welcome you um, to the pack and to the population of Mole City. May you uh, stay for a long time. Trust me, your pay will be more than, uh, more than ample. Um, at least 64 gold nuggets. I mean, 64 gold ingots a month, if that will do you. Um, Uh-oh, we better fence this off. She might go running, running off. But guys, we have cured our very first infected villager, and we have a female butler, Beatrice the butler. Welcome, Beatrice. Um, there is a home waiting for you. Let's see if she heads, if she makes this her home. She does. Bam! Oh, and she closed the door. She closed the door. She has made this her home, guys. We have successfully, successfully birthed our very first NPC, the Butler of Mole City. And uh, I gotta say, guys, now is no better time for a freaking high five in this glorious jungle rain. You know, guys, bringing Beatrice into this Minecraft world was more to me than just a goal in this game. It represented to me... Uh, a new beginning, a new start. Um, it was kind of therapeutic for me, man. I was going through a really bad part uh, of my life at that stage, and bringing Beatrice into our world was like, it was like a new life, you know. It was, it, it, it represented to me uh, a fresh beginning, a new beginning, and and it was a, it it may not seem like it, or it, it may sound really dumb, but to me, Beatrice arriving at the mole hole was a, it was a really meaningful moment for me and uh, I will never ever forget that as long as I mean who knows how long we'll be uh, on YouTube and you know how long we'll be playing Minecraft but for ho however many years we do this I will never never forget that moment and whenever I think about it I think so fondly about you guys about all the amazing and incredible support that the Cyberdog community gave me throughout that time in my life and uh, you know again I want to I just want to take this opportunity to thank the guys on dogcraft.net who stood by me thick and thin even not having seen me for many weeks when i was at my very very worst not being able to work not being able to go online not being able to do anything you guys stuck around for me man you guys waited there for me and you guys always believed that i would be able to get back on my feet and you know what guys without you i would never have been able to do that and you guys all know who you are and uh, i gotta say man i freaking love you guys so much and I, I will never be able to thank you enough for what you have have all done for me and you know, the same goes to all of you cyberdogs who have been giving me such incredible support, man. Sending me emails, making me fat fan art, making me videos. You know, all the comments that you guys have made, being so worried about me and giving me all the love that you can from all over the world, guys. Seriously, without all of you, I wouldn't be talking to you right now, man. I don't know what I would be doing, but uh, I definitely wouldn't be doing this. So, you know, this achievement that we've got in front of us, guys, is as much my achievement as it is yours. And I'm so happy to be sharing this journey with you guys. And I never wanted to freaking end. But uh, we're almost at the end of this look back on season two, guys. My favorite moments from season two. And uh, we're going to have a look at one more scene. And that is, of course, 
uh, the apartment blocks, which is the last big construction that we finished in season two. I gotta tell you guys, I love the apartment blocks so freaking much, and it's just, it gives me such inspiration looking at them, knowing that Mole City is gonna turn out so incredibly awesome in season three, guys. Let's have a look at the apartment blocks of, Mo of the Mole District coming to life. But guys, let's quickly have a look at what I have done to the apartment blocks in the Mole District. As you can see, they are now completed and I absolutely love this design. It's got a sort of oriental feel to it, which I really like, but it, it also um, is very much in the style of Beatrice's house and a very good representation of what I wanted the Mole District of Mole City to look like. And uh, as you can see, guys, um, I have finished off the roof, I finished off the lips, I've added some awesome pot plants to the sides here, I've added a nice little entry hall over here, um, glowstone to the top of the doors and the balconies, and of course I finished off this sweet ass balcony. I actually changed the blocks to stone bricks instead of cobblestone so that the balcony would stick out more, and I think that really, um, really helped it you know, really help make this balcony pop. And uh, let's go upstairs to the second story apartment and you guys can see what, that I've also added a balcony to this side and this is gonna be a really sweet view. I think what we'll do is take down all of these trees so that um, we can actually look all the way over the farmlands onto the horizon over there. And of course the sun sets in that direction. So you'll get a really epic sunset from this balcony. Talk about a romantic place, man. Maybe I'll bring Beatrice over here one day for a, for a sundowner. You guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, my cyber diggity dogs and my friends, that brings us to the end of this season two finale special. We've been looking at some of my favorite moments from season two, and I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. Now, I promised you guys at the beginning of the video that there is gonna be something special for you at the end of this video. I made a video called Broken Arrows, and I've taken that off YouTube now, but loads of you guys have been asking if you guys could hear the song that I sang in that video, and that is exactly what you're gonna be hearing at the end of this video, guys. So don't close it now. Um, I've just got one more thing to say, and that is to say thank you, Cyberdogs, for everything that you have done for me and for giving me a life that I could only have ever, ever imagined. You guys will never understand how happy you have made me, how you guys have fulfilled me, how you have helped me reach my dreams. And uh, man, I will never be grateful enough to all of you guys. And thank you so much for watching season two all the way from the beginning to the end. And to all of you guys who have stuck through me uh, through thick and thin, through high and low. And guys, we've got season three coming up and it is gonna be freaking sweet. Damn, <laughs> cannot freaking wait guys. This is Rendog signing out for the last time from season two. And we will see you all in season freaking three. Broken arrows along the shore seems you intended to go back for more. Sometimes